Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Katrina Morton and I'm a sensory motor psychotherapist. What I want to talk to you today about is trauma, the impact that trauma has on us and why it's so difficult to recover from trauma. When we have a, an experience that is overwhelming, terrifying, potentially life-threatening, something that it just feels as though it's way bigger than what we can cope with at the time. That can register in a part of our brain called the amygdala. It's what we refer to as the smoke detector. It will store traumatic memory and keep it there. The thing is with the amygdala, unlike other parts of your brain, is it doesn't have a chronology, which means that the things in there, they get stored in a jumbly way, but also they don't age. There's no aging process. It's part of our survival brain. And it's there as a warning signal to give us that initial response so we don't have to think about things. So when a trauma goes into our amygdala, it can then be triggered by something that reminds us of the original trauma. It can be an image, a smell, a memory, uh, just something somebody says. It rewires our brain and we don't have time to think. We go into fight, flight or freeze. And we don't really have any say in what happens, it just happens. And if we're little, we haven't got capacity for a fight response and probably not a flight response. So the one that we'll go for is freeze, because it's all we have. It bypasses our thinking brain. So we don't have time to think, oh my goodness, there's a tiger gonna come and eat me. What am I gonna do about it? We just go into that survival part of our brain. We get pumped full of adrenaline and hormones so that we can act or we can be anaesthetized and not feel. This process, because it's stored in the amygdala, we don't process it through our dreams, we don't process it through our new life experiences. So even although life can be completely different to how it was at the original trauma, when it gets triggered and activated, it sets up our whole nervous system and affects our body and makes us behave in a certain way. The way we carry these traumas, we carry them in our body. We can't just talk about the event and hope that, that helps getting it out there. Because all those responses, the fight, flight and freeze, and all the things that lead up to it, they're all activated and carried out by our body. We will carry these trauma wounds with us and they can show up in very everyday kind of ways. It might only be down one side of our body and we might notice that every injury we get, it comes down one side of our body. Our knee, our hip, our shoulder, our arm, and the other side feels very fully functioning. We might blame this side for being weak and kind of fall out with it and have a difficult relationship with it. When actually, I think of it as this part of your body is really taking one for the team so the rest of you can function and carry on. So we have to be able to get a better relationship with our body so we can listen hear what's missing and hear what's needed so we can help it not be so burdened so that we gain control and function and we're able to understand why that would make sense but we want to help everything be able to work together and that way we can heal from our trauma. What I help people do is look for resources that can help them get out of those responses. So they can stay present, they can get themselves back. They don't dissociate, they don't have to flee, they don't have to freeze. That helps us build up much more resilience to this. It won't necessarily make the trauma fade, but it means that it doesn't have the same impact upon us. None of us really know what things are stored in our amygdala. I've known people who have had some kind of life-changing thing happen to them and suddenly they become very, very afraid, they can't go out in public or they can't drive the car. Some people can have very, 
traumatic experiences and not suffer from trauma or, or PTSD. This is something that can happen to any of us, but it doesn't happen to all of us. And we have to have an understanding of why. Some people are more resilient. Some people have a much wider capacity for dealing with extreme emotional experiences than others, which can be from our attachments, it can be from our life experiences, it can be our genetic makeup. It can just be the circumstances of what happened on that day. If you're in a freeze response, you can't move. Sometimes it doesn't help just looking around going, there's nothing to be frightened of because the initial trauma has been triggered and it feels like we're re-experiencing. It actually feels like it's happening over and over again because it hasn't faded. People with trauma can be very misunderstood. We can't see trauma. We can see the physical behaviours and the, the impact it has, but we can't see any of these wounds. They're in our brain, they're in our body. And it can be very, very easy for people to be misdiagnosed. Not everybody that suffers from trauma has flashbacks. Some people have absolutely no conscious memory of what's happened to them. Some people might have been uh, very young or they can have had uh, an attack from behind, say. They'll have no memory of it, so they'll have no flashbacks. They might have recurring nightmares, but they might have no other signs apart from I can't get out of the house or I have panic attacks in the supermarket. People need support after a traumatic event. And from therapists who actually do know what they're doing, how to recognise trauma, and know how to treat it to help them get over it. Trauma is not a life sentence. A lot of psychiatrists and doctors will tell you you just have to learn to live with it. No, you don't. Just as much as it can emerge from nowhere, it can fade. You do need the right support and the right help and you need to know what's going on and what to do. We can get stronger, we can get more resilient, we can live the lives that we want to live. It's not a life sentence. If you have any questions about trauma and some of the things that I've talked about, please send us comments, send us questions, ask us stuff. I haven't covered everything here today. I know I haven't. So if you've enjoyed this video, then give us a thumbs up, like and subscribe, and let us know what you think. Thank you ever so much for watching and we'll see you again next time.